Welcome back to BE 110. Today we're going to derive the conservation of momentum laws for continua, starting with the conservation of linear momentum. Previously, we derived the special case of conservation of linear momentum for a body in static equilibrium. Today, allowing for accelerations and therefore inertial forces, we'll derive the full equations for conservation of linear momentum and in words this statement will generalize to the following. The rate of change of linear momentum of the particles that instantaneously lie within a fixed region R is proportional to the resultant of the body forces acting on R together with the resultant of the surface tractions acting on the surface S So mathematically, we can write this as the material time derivative of the triple integral over R of the density rho times velocity v with respect to volume is equal to the triple integral over R of the density times the body force with respect to volume plus the double integral over S, the surface, of the traction vector T integrated over the surface. So the first term are the inertial forces, the rate of change of mass times velocity. The second term are the body forces, the integral of the body forces per unit mass times mass per unit volume over volume. And the third term are the surface traction or the surface, surface forces, the integral of all the surface tractions over S. Expressing this same equation in index notation and using Cauchy's law to convert the traction into stress, making use of the unit normal n to the surface, where t, little t, is equal to n dot big T. We'll obtain the material derivative of the triple integral over r of rho vi with respect to volume is equal to the triple integral over the region R of rho vi with respect to volume minus the surface integral of tji nj, which is the surface tractions and Cauchy's formula. Now, as we did before when we applied derived the equilibrium equations, we apply the divergence theorem to convert the surface integral into a volume integral, which will yield three volume integrals that we can collect together as a triple integral over R of rho dVi dt, that's the inertial force term, minus rho V sub i minus del Tji del Xj, where so this is divergence of the stress tensor integrated with respect to the volume is equal to zero. And now as we've done before we note that since the region R over which this integral must hold is entirely arbitrary and so it must hold for any and all regions that means that the integrand itself the expression inside the integral must be zero. And hence we obtain the familiar differential form of the conservation of linear momentum that del Tji del Xj plus rho Bi, these are the two terms that we already derived in the equilibrium equation, are equal to rho times material derivative with respect to time of the velocity, which is the acceleration, so rho times acceleration, where Ai are components of the acceleration vector. So surface forces plus body forces equals inertial forces. Now let's derive the conservation of angular momentum. For a particle, when we wrote conservation of angular momentum, we could write the material derivative with respect to time of mass times the vector cross product of the position vector and the 
velocity vector will equal the vector cross product of the position vector and the external force vector P, where P is the resultant of those applied forces, which in the case of our continuum will be the sum of the resultant of the body forces and surface forces. So again, generalizing for a continuum and recognizing that the resulting forces come from the surface and body forces, we can write that the material derivative with respect to time of the volume integral over R of the density by the position vector crossed with the velocity vector integrated with respect to volume is equal to the triple integral over R of the density times the position vector crossed with the body force vector integrated over the volume plus the integral over the surface of the position vector crossed with the surface traction vector T sub n, T superscript n. Writing this in comp components again, we would have that material derivative of the volume integral rho times Eijk, the permutation symbol, times x sub i v sub k integrated with respect to v is equal to the triple integral over r of rho times the permutation symbol times xj bk integrated with respect to volume plus the surface integral of the permutation symbol times xj times tpk times np integrated with respect to surface. Again, applying the divergence theorem to turn the surface integral into a volume integral, which will give us the divergence of the stress, and using the same reasoning as before, so that we, the integrand itself must be satisfied, we obtain the permutation symbol Eijk times the material derivative ddt of xj times vk equals the permutation symbol Eijk times the density rho times xj bk plus del del xp of xj times tpk Now from the definition of the material derivative, we can write that the material derivative with respect to time of Vj xk will be xk times the material derivative of Vj plus Vj times the partial derivative dxj dvk del xj. So this first term is the acceleration, uh, xj times the acceleration, ak, and the second term is vj times vk, since del xj of vk with respect to xj is vk. Similarly, we can expand the derivative del del xp of xj tpk to be del xj del xp using the chain rule times tpk plus xj times del tpk del xp. Del xj del xp here is delta jp times tpk plus xj times del tpk del xp. So this term here then becomes tjk plus this term xj del tpk del xp. So now using these two expressions, we can substitute them into our expression above, like Eijk outside of everything, and we get Eijk times Tjk plus Xj times Tpk del Tpk del Xp plus rho bk minus rho times ak yeah, minus rho vi vk is equal to zero. 
Now, if we look at this term here, it's multiplied by xj, we can see that this is in fact the conservation of linear momentum. By conservation of linear momentum, this expression is zero because these two terms equal the inertial force. Here we observe that Eijk times Vivk are components of the cross product of V with itself. But the cross product of a vector with itself is zero because the sine of the angle between the two vectors is zero. So therefore this term disappears, this term disappears, and we're left with Eijk, the permutation symbol, times Tjk is equal to zero. And now if we recognize that Eijk is equal to the negative of Eikj, which we get by switching the indices k and j, then that would suggest that the only way that this could all sum to zero is if Tjk is equal to Tkj, in other words, if Cauchy stress tensor is symmetric. So this is the same result we got more easily before by considering the equilibrium of, of the stresses. And this result only relies on the assumption that there are no distributed body or surface couples acting in the material R. And in practice, this is true, but for, for all but a few very specialized applications and uh, unusual materials and unusual conditions that we don't have to worry about. So for all practical purposes, conservation of angular momentum requires that the Cauchy stress tensor be symmetric. There are other definitions of the stress tensor, and at least one of them is not by definition symmetric, um, but this underlying property of the Cauchy stress tensor and its Lagrangian equivalent when we learn about that uh, are valid uh, for all practical applications. This completes our derivations, but if you were observant, you may have noticed that I did something that wasn't completely legitimate, or at least didn't appear to be. So you'll notice you'll notice here, for example, that the material time derivative of the volume integral of rho times vi I substituted with the volume integral of rho times the material derivative of v. That would imply that rho is constant in time, but in fact, we haven't uh, in required that. And in general, that's not the case. So in fact, this is a result that comes from conservation of mass. So I want to finish just by proving that so that you don't think I made a mathematical mistake or that I assumed or that we have to assume that the density is constant. In fact, we don't. This is this simplification that the material time derivative of the volume integral of rho times v is equal to the volume integral of rho times the material derivative of v actually is a result we can prove making use of the Eulerian form of mass conservation. And you'll see I did the same thing down here where here we had the uh, material time derivative of rho times x crossed with v, so another vector in this case, uh, and again ended up uh, uh, putting that material time derivative uh, inside the, uh, the integral and ignoring and, and not applying it to rho. So this is merely a proof that we've already made use of. So let's take the material der time derivative of a volume integral and for the purposes of this uh, derivation, we'll consider that this is the material time derivative of the volume integral of rho times a quantity phi, and phi is some sort of density of another quantity, capital phi. So where little phi is the amount of the quantity big phi per unit mass. This material derivative of the integral therefore represents the rate of change of the amount of capital phi 
which is associated with the particles that instantaneously occupy the region R at time t. Remember, it's a material derivative, so it's a rate of change as seen by the material particles. Hence, we can write an expression for the rate of increase of the amount of capital phi within the fixed spatial region R as being the sum of the rate of increase of phi associated with the particles instantaneously within R, so that's the part that comes from the material derivative, together with the net rate of influx of phi into R across the boundary of R, S. So mathematically, this statement above would be the partial derivative of little phi times rho with respect to time integrated over the volume equals the material derivative of the volume integral of phi times rho with respect to volume minus the surface integral over s of phi times rho times n the outward normal dotted with phi the velocity vector with integrated with respect to the surface. And remember the minus sign here for an influx is because the n is an outward normal, and so this term here would represent an, an outflex, an outward flex. Applying then the divergence theorem and rearranging this expression, we'll obtain that the material time derivative of the volume integral over r of phi times rho with respect to v is equal to the volume integral over r of the derivative del phi rho del t plus the divergence of phi by rho by v integrated over the volume. Now, in the special case when phi is equal to 1, uh, this integral is the mass within r. And conservation of mass requires that the material derivative of this integral is zero. Hence, when phi is equal to 1, the integral on the right-hand side must be zero for all regions R, and thus the integral, the integrand itself, must be zero. For phi in general, we can expand the integrand on the right-hand side. We'll get phi times del rho del t plus the divergence of rho v plus rho times del phi del t plus v dot grad phi. Now observe that this term is actually zero because this is the continuity equation. And this term here is the material derivative of phi by the definition of the material derivative. Therefore, putting all this together, we can write that the material time derivative, big D dt, of the volume integral over R of phi times rho dv is equal to the triple integral of rho times d phi dt with respect to volume. So this is the substitution that I was using. It, you can see it didn't require that the density rho is constant with respect to time. Rather, this is a simplification that came about from the definition of the material derivative and the continuity equation. I don't think it's important to memorize this result. Uh, I'm just showing you this so that you appreciate that there was no simplification or error or approximation in the derivations of the conservation laws that we, uh, that we derive for conservation of linear and angular momentum.